Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM. Today we're doing five things you might not know about my Dennis RS. Number one, it's actually kind of rare. There are quite a few RSs in preservation, but most of them, although they look like this, they're actually significantly different. Most that you'll see are in fact a RS-133. Which looks the same as my truck. However, rather than the Perkins 540, this one has the even larger Perkins 640 V8. And is paired to the Allison MT-643 four-speed automatic gearbox. My truck, is fitted with the smaller Perkins 540 8.8 litre V8, which more unusually is paired to a Turner T5 400 five speed manual gearbox. Which personally I much prefer. To my knowledge, there are only four of these left in the world. This one's sister, which is UCL 494W, which a friend of mine owned and we had some pictures together and now it's disappeared, I don't know where. There's one further up north and the other one I think is in Cuba. Number two, delivery took ages. She was ordered on the 24th of May, 1979. I've got the piece of paper showing what was specified for her. She's in fact the first one of a batch of three that was ordered. But she wasn't delivered until the 1st of July, 1981, a whole two years after the initial order went in. Fact number three, RS stands for rigid steel. Although when it was in development, the code name was retained steel. Now this was significant because this replaced Dennis's previous models like the D where the cab was made from a combination of wood and fiberglass. The back end remained pretty much the same but having an all steel construction meant that this was far more durable and in the event of an accident this was far more likely to protect those inside. And the cab was designed to be multi-platform so that it could go onto the other specialist vehicles like dust carts that Dennis also made. It however does not tip. All access to the engine is through the engine cover inside the cab, which as you may have seen is a royal pain in the backside. Because at the time, Dennis thought that most fire stations would not have sufficient room to accommodate a tipping cab. Basically, they thought the ceilings wouldn't be high enough that as the cab tilts forward, the back end wouldn't hit it. It was later specced by London Fire Brigade that they really did want a tipping cab. Fact number four. Like all of her sisters, she was fitted with a Godiva pump. There were two options that could have been spec'd, either the 500 gallons per minute or the significantly larger 1000 gallons per minute pump. This one is the smaller of the pumps, but when you consider that the tank on board holds only 400 imperial gallons, that's about 1.8 thousand litres in today's money, that means that at full chat this pump with both the main nozzles and the side nozzles will empty the onboard in less than a minute. That's almost two tons of water that are thrown out in under 60 seconds. That's mad. Point number five. The doors are not meant to look like this. She did not leave the factory with the checker plate slapped on the side, no. Machines of this period tend to suffer with what was known as Dennis disease. It was such a large problem, it's got its own name. And that was water would get into the door and rot them out from the bottom upwards. When this one left active service and went into industrial use, to combat the problem, they cut out the inside of the door where it got rotten and attached these plates. Lots of people don't like them, but I think it's quite distinctive and it's part of the machine's history. And so they're staying on it because I quite like them now. I'll go on then, one more. She was supplied new in 1981 to Northup Fire Service and went to work at Great Yarmouth before being moved to Stalham for the end of its life. Fire engines last in service for about 15 years. So in 1996, she came out of service and was sold to Haverhill to work in the chemical plant there. She lasted on the site there for 10 years before being sold to Suffolk Fire Engine Services in 2006, where she was loaned to Gardner Associates Fire Investigation Training and returned back to Suffolk Fire Engine Services until the chap who owned her died. 
In 2015, I came along and have owned her ever since. Ah, oh, go on then, we'll have one last fact. Neither of these are her original ladders. In fact, the mechanism at the front that's meant to hold the original ladders was cut down so that she'd fit into the garage where she used to be stored. Originally, when she was new, she had an escape ladder which clumped on the back and these, well, neither of these are authentic for it, but it does the trick. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed finding out about my Dennis RS. If you want more information or more things it's done, there's a couple of suggestions coming up on the screen now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>